we will finish crystal systems by discussing the hexagonal system. It throws us two curveballs, and so that's why it's a good thing to save for last. The hexagonal system. Because what the hexagonal system does is it gets broken down into two divisions. There are two divisions, and the first division is called the hexagonal division. And the hexagonal division has six folds, all right, the A6s. But there's another division that has the three folds, and that's called the rhombohedral division. Rhombohedral division of the hexagonal system. Both of these have very important minerals inside of them. For example, the rhombohedral division has my favorite mineral, calcite. And it also has quartz. And the hexagonal division has things like apatite and beryl. And, um, and of course, beryl is the thing that makes aquamarine and emerald. Right? It's a beautiful gemstone. So these are very important symmetries to understand. And what we're going to do is, before we even dive into these two different divisions, we'll just draw the axes relationships for both. This applies to both rhombohedral division and hexagonal division. There is a c-axis. That c-axis can either be longer or shorter than the other axes. Okay, And importantly, the other axes, there's not two of them. It's not just A and B. Instead, there are three of them. And they're just given the symbol A1, A2, and A3. And they intersect with one another at 90 degrees. So if we were to do so, we have C plus and we have C minus. Then what we have is A1 that comes out like this. That feels normal, right? And then there's um, that's positive. And then A1 minus goes back here. Then there is A2 goes here. There's A2 and positive, and A2 minus goes back here. And then there is the new one, which is our A3. And so A3 positive goes back here, and A3 minus goes back here. Now the angle between C and the A's is 90 degrees. 90 degrees. But the angle between the A1 and the A2, or the A2 and the A3, this is 120 degrees. We could draw the same thing over again from a bird's eye view, just looking down the c-axis. That's a that's good geology speak or mineralogy speak. Let's look down the c-axis. We would see the A1. So here's our middle point, right? So there's A1, and here comes there's A3. And that angle is 120. And this dots back through here. And then coming out in this direction right here is A2 with the minus A2 going back like this. All right, so we see that strong 120 degree angles between each of the main axes. So as we write this down, what we would say is that A1 equals A2, which equals A3, which does not equal C, which could be either longer or shorter, right? That's one thing I haven't maybe mentioned here is that these are all the same lengths. And then in terms of our angles, we say that this angle between the C and the A, which is alpha, right? So that's alpha angle. Alpha equals 90. And this angle between them, this we give the symbol beta. And so beta equals 120. This is how the axes work in both the hexagonal division and the rhombohedral division. So let's unpack the hexagonal division here a bit. Oh, it's a little zoomed out. Here is the red version of beryl, which is called, which is a kind of a weird mineral you probably won't see. I've actually never seen in real life called bixbite. So in the hexagonal division, what we have is a a, oh, get rid of that. We have an A6, and you can see the A6 comes out in this direction, and we're going to have our A2s come out in this direction, right? Like so. The crystal class we're worried about here is 6 over M, 2 over M, 2 over M, and that has a center of symmetry, 1A6. The reason I'm repeating all this stuff, even though I know it's already in your notes, is for memorization purposes. The more you hear the stuff, the more likely it is to sink in. We have the A6 
parallels the c-axis. So how do we say it? Let's just go this. So the a6, this is the c-axis. Where are the 6a2s? The 6a2s are on the a-axis and between the a-axis. So this is um, along and between the a1, a2, and a3. What does that mean? Okay, that means the a2s are coming along these axes here. Or we would put our fingers here. That would be an a, uh, sorry, that would be a twofold. How do we say that symbology? Twofold. We also put a twofold here, here. This is how you draw it if, if you were working on that. And the mirror planes, let's see where are the mirror planes. They There's a mirror plane perpendicular to every single rotation. So you can slice it and slice it perpendicular to each. In fact, let's just go ahead and write this. Let's say perp to each rotation. That's how you find the symmetry elements in the hexagonal division. If you write down all these cheat sheets in a nice clean way, I, I, I recognize I'm getting a little messy, then when you sit down to lab and you know your crystal is hexagonal, you'll start to be able to train your eye about where you should look for the other things. Now the rhombohedral division, it's probably the hardest division to visualize because this has a rotation with, that's threefold. And in fact, it's a bar three. The most famous one, at least, is a bar three, and we'll, we'll introduce that one first. This is a bar three, two over m. This means it has one bar three. It's going to parallel the c-axis, by the way. It has three a2s, and it has three mirrors. What does this look like? Well, this it's calcite is crystallizes in this rhombohedral division. So do a bunch of others, but calcite's definitely the most famous one. And it can either take the form of, let's see if I do a different color here. This is called this shape here is called a rhombohedron. This shape here is called a scalenohedron. And both of these crystallize in this crystal class. This is complicated and so what we're going to try to do and I'm going to try to do it and if this sketch doesn't work go to your textbook and find one better to copy. We're going to draw a rhombohedron oriented with the c-axis vertically. To do that follow along maybe let me try here stumble through it and then pause it when you see how I've done it. You draw this rom face and then we need to draw secondary rom faces coming off behind it. So let's see, this goes down, this goes up, okay, decent, oh no, it's messy. Now if we see the back side of the crystal, this comes like this, this comes like this, and that comes like that. Oof, ooh, it got sloppy down in here. It's really clean on my sheet of paper that I'm copying this from. Now the way this works is right here in the middle of the crystal is where all the axes intersect one another. The C axis comes up through here. There's our C and it corresponds to our bar three roto inversion. The A, one, two, and three shoot through these faces here. And so what we're gonna do is we would put, put a line. It's gonna come from here to here, okay? So we're gonna draw an axis like that. That's one of our twofold axes, and it's like our, that's our A1, and it's also one of the A2s. And we can do it in all the other directions, so we'd go from here to here. A line through. All right, we can continue it through. That is a A2, and it's another one of our A2s. And then where was our last one? I'm losing it in my, uh, let's see, one to two, one to two, what have I done wrong here, people? One to two. One to two. I can't quite see it. Oh, there it is. It's here. Two. I might be missing something. Anyways, 
You get the idea. It better be 120. It's along the other A, too. And I'm freezing on the spot. That happens when people are presenting. Forgive me. Find it in your textbook. Okay, so we've got the bar 3 as the C-axis, and the A2s lie in, on the horizontal A2s, and the mirror planes bisect the angles between the A2s. So what does that mean? The mirror planes bisect the A2s. So here's an A2, and here's an A2, so one of the mirrors is going to shoot down through here, and the other mirror is going to be there, and the other mirror is there. You'll see it if you look down from the top view. You would get a mirror here, and a mirror here, and a mirror here when you get a perfect rhombohedron. Uh, the other division is how quartz crystallizes. So we're going to do the other division, or so the other crystal class, let's be specific with our words here. The last crystal class of this whole discussion is the 3-2 crystal class. The 3-2 crystal class has 1A3 and it has 3A2s. This is what low quartz, and we haven't talked about high quartz, low quartz, which is also known as alpha quartz or beta quartz, but we're going to get to it. But most of the quartz that crystallizes that we find as beautiful specimens crystallizes in this rhombohedral division. The way this works, and we'll just draw it here on this version, is that, of course, this, ooh, that doesn't show up good because the crystal is such a beautiful smoky quartz. The C-axis is like so, and the A3 is along, let's just say that, let's say along the C-axis. And the three A2s are on the A1, A2, and A3 faces, okay? And so that means they would be, they would be coming out like so, like so, and Where's the other ones out there, right? So that here's our C, which is our three, which is our A3, and these are our A2s along the A1, A2, and A3 direction. Now the thing that's tricky about this is when you see quartz, like if we were looking down this axis, we would actually see the shape of a hexagon. And we would think to ourselves, that's an A6. And that would be massively wrong. And the reason why, let me point you to this area right here. Notice how this face, this kind of triangular pyramid shape, ends here, and the one next to it is higher. And then the, this one over here is again low. And so instead, there is this, um, how could we draw that? If we drew that in like this, we would actually show like this face is like this face, which is like this face, only allowing it to be an A3. Anyways, that's how quartz crystallizes, so it's going to be an important one for you since quartz is such a common mineral to see. All right, we're done with the crystal systems. Remember, the textbook hits this for about 20-something pages with fantastic, um, with fantastic diagrams on pages 182 to 208. So if I flubbed up, right, go to the textbook and learn from another voice. See you next time.